Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Brian, and I want to welcome you back to Beginning C Sharp with Unity Screencast Series. In this episode, we're going to be jumping into the world of conditionals. So far in this series, you've learned to create data, but in this episode, you're going to learn how to act on it. You'll do this through the use of if statements. Take a look at this funny engineering diagram. First, there is the question. Does it move? You have a choice, yes or no. Saying yes poses a different question. Should it? Again, you have a simple question that is a binary choice. You can only answer yes or no, producing a result. In this case, a funny one. In C Sharp, we can do the same, and we do it through the use of if statements. An if statement poses a condition which must either result in a true or false answer. The way you create an if statement in C Sharp is by first using the keyword if. Next, you provide two parentheses. The condition exists within the parentheses, and as I mentioned, it must evaluate to a true or false answer. After the parentheses, you provide an open brace, followed by any code you want to run if the condition is true. After the code block, you provide a closing brace, potentially ending the if statement. More on that in just a moment. Let's take a look at the condition. Imagine you are developing a role-playing game where the player is about to buy a talking sword. The player has 100 gold, but the talking sword is 1,000 gold. How would you write an if statement to see if the player can buy the sword? Within the parentheses, you'd put player gold greater than talking sword value. Then within the brace, you'd put a simple statement, letting the player know that the sale went through. In this case, the player doesn't have enough gold to buy the sword, so the code block would be passed over. You check if values are the same with the equals equals operator, or you can check if they are different with the exclamation point equals operator. You could also check to see if the player gold is greater than or equal, just as you could check for less than or equal. You also have what are known as compound operators. The first one is the AND operator. With it, you can check multiple conditions. In order for the code block to run, all conditions must evaluate to true. With the OR operator, any condition can be true for the code to run. Finally, you have the NOT operator. This is the exclamation point. This, in essence, reverses the logic. If a condition evaluates to true, the NOT operator will make it false. Take this simple condition, if is alive. Is alive is a bool value, so this simple if statement translates to this. If is alive equals equals true. Now let's see what happens when the NOT operator gets involved. The condition becomes if NOT is alive, which is shorthand for if is alive equals equals false. If the is alive variable is false, then the condition will evaluate to true, and the code in the braces will run. Don't think about it too much. You'll grow to understand the NOT operator as you work with it. Let's return back to those braces. There will be times when you want to use multiple conditions, and you do this with the else statement. After the closing brace, you can put an else followed by a regular if conditional. You can use as many of these as you want. Finally, you may just want a default condition. Then you use the plain old else statement. This else statement must be the last thing added to an if block. Okay, let's dive into working with if statements. And to do this, we're going to create a new script and we're just gonna call this multiplayer. So I'm gonna click create C sharp script and I'll just call this multiplayer like this. Next, I'm going to select my cube here, and I'm going to remove the high score script on it. Then I'm going to take my multiplayer and just drag it on the cube like so. And you can see we have it right here. Now I'll double click and we'll start editing. So here we have our multiplayer script open. I'm going to add in a few variables here. First, I'm gonna put an int variable of the number of players, like so. Next, we'll have a string array containing their names.
Then we'll have a Boolean value to indicate whether we should validate the names. And finally, we'll have another bool value to indicate if this is online. For instance, you may be doing local multiplayer instead of online multiplayer. Now, we're not actually going to code multiplayer. We're just going to be playing around with if statements. Now, I'm going to delete these two methods here, and I'm going to create on disable. As we've been doing everything within on disable in this course so far. The first thing we want to do is print out a message depending on the number of players. If there's, say, one player, we should say, hello, player one. If there's two players, we should put, hello, players. And if there's no players, we should put, please join the game. To do this, I'm going to type if, and I'm going to put in parentheses. Then I'm going to put players equals zero. So if there's no players, I'm going to put an open brace. And you can see Visual Studio adds a closing brace. And I'll just simply print out a message to the console. Like so. Now I want to check if there's one player. So I can do something like this. If players equals one, and you can see we have our brace. We'll put debug log, and then we'll put hello player one. And now let's add our last condition. In this case, we can check to see if this is greater than one. We know it's now two, so we can put hello players. What's going to happen is that each if statement is going to be evaluated. Now in this case, it's not a big deal, but in other cases, this could put a bug. For instance, if we had say two players, if we wanted to check if there was three players and we did something like this, players are equal to two, is greater than two, then this would be evaluated to true. It would say, hello players. And then this would be evaluated. It would say, hello, three players or something like that. What we should do is add them all into one if statement. The way we do this is through the else. After this if, I'll just put an else, and then I will move this onto this line like so. And in this case, we don't even need to check the condition. We'll just put else like so. Now let's see this in action. We're switching back to Unity. And now I'm going to run the game. And I'm going to select the cube. And you can see here we have our fields that we just created. And we have zero. So let's see what happens when we select zero. I'm going to deselect the cube. And I'll move open up the console. And you can see it says, please join game. OK, let's see if we have one player. We will deselect the cube. It says, hello, player one. And let's put two players. It says, hello, players. Now, what happens if I put negative one or negative 10 in that case? We will deselect it. And you can see it still says, hello, players. What we're not doing is validating this field. The, the user can put in anything they want when in fact, you want them only to put in three numbers, 0, 1, or 2. Let's add that validation logic. I'm going to switch back to Unity. And here, I'm going to put another if statement. In this case, we'll check to see if players is greater than negative 1. And now I'm going to use an ampersand ampersand. which means now I'm attaching two conditions. So I want this to be less than players three, like so. So essentially, this can be only zero, one, or two. If, it's, if the user enters a number higher or lower than those numbers, then what will happen is we'll print out an error message. Here, I'll put in my opening brace. And remember, all the code goes within the if block between the two braces. 
And then down here, we'll put another else statement. And we'll simply print out a message. Now we'll save and switch back to Unity. Here we'll run the game. And now when I switch open the console and I put negative one players, we'll disable the cube. And you can see here it says, please enter zero through two players. And of course this works for three and higher. Like so. Now we have this validate names field here. Basically, if you select this, then you should validate the names. And here you can see we have names in a name in an array like so. And let's just put one like here. So you can see we have one element in this array and we want to make sure that the names don't say contain any profanity or something like that. So I'm going to switch back to Visual Studio. And down underneath this if block, we're going to create another if block. Now we're going to check if validate names equals true. We'll say, uh, we'll just say this does like um, some code is runs here to validate the names. Remember, this is a comment and this will be disregarded by C sharp. Now, if statements ultimately boil down to true and false, and this is a true and false value. So instead of putting if validate names equals true, we can simply do this, if validate names. This is just shorthand for that. Likewise, if you want to check if it's false, you can put an exclamation mark right in front of it, and this will see if valid names equals false. You can see here we have another condition, is online. Let's say this wasn't just a local multiplayer, but this game was actually over the internet. So it's really important that you validate names. Well, we can put another condition here. We can put or, and this works just like the and operator. Whereas the and checks if both these conditions are true before progressing, the or operator checks if one of these conditions is true. So let's say if, is online, like so. Now, if validate names is false, then the if statement will check is online. And to make sure that's true, and if it is true, it will run like so. But what if we have more than one player? So we want to check to see if is online and has more than one players. So we can add another condition, like this players equals, actually we should check if it's greater than zero. So if is online and the players are equal greater than zero, then this validate will run no matter what. Here, let's put one. This, otherwise, if we have greater than zero, then this checkbox seems useless. Now this seems a little bit confusing. You'll see these things here, but you'll see the or, and then you'll see the and, but this expression is grouped together. And the way to make it clear is by just putting parentheses around it like so. So that when you're looking at this later down the road, you can see that this condition is being checked as one group. So you have this condition here and you have this condition here. Well, that's it for this screencast, but as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. In your challenge, I want you to create a guess the number game. Have the player guess between one through 10. If the guessed number is higher than the actual number, the console should read too high. If it is too low, the console should read too low. And of course, if they get it right, the console should read you win. Players should guess using a public int field and they should submit their guess by disabling the cube like we've been doing. Finally, the code for generating the random number is included below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.